Hey everybody, Tactic Angel here, back on the PlayStation 4 to do another Commander review for World of Warships Legends. Today we're going to be talking about Mikhail Kedroff on what I like to call the man, the math, the legend. Like my ship reviews, I'm going to start by talking a little bit about history, this time of the man. We'll move into some analysis, his abilities, and then finish off with inspirations. As usual, I should have left an index down in the description if you want to skip around, but otherwise let's just jump into it. Mikhail Alexandrovich Kedrov was born on the 1st of September 1878, according to the Julian calendar, which is the calendar commonly used by the West today. You may also find his date of birth listed as the 13th of September, which would be the Gregorian calendar, which was the official calendar of Imperial Russia. He attended the Moscow Cadet Corps, graduating first in his class in 1899. He served aboard the Gerzog Edinburgh, or Duke of Edinburgh, as midshipman starting in 1903. By 1904, he had been transferred to Port Arthur, where he would gain experience in the first of three wars in which he would serve, the Russo-Japanese War. Here, as a lieutenant, he served as flag officer to Admiral Makarov, another naval legend, who had been sent to Port Arthur to lead the Russian Pacific Squadron. As luck would have it, though Kedrov was wounded at Port Arthur, he was not aboard Makarov's flagship, the Petropavlovsk, as he normally would have been when it struck a mine outside of Port Arthur and detonated. Vilgum Vitgift, who is generally not well remembered in the annals of naval history, assumed command of the Pacific Squadron following Makarov's death, and Kedrov would continue as flag officer for the new admiral. Vitgef was not long for that command, though, as he was slain by a main battery hit to the bridge of his flagship, the Tsarevich. Kedrov himself was badly wounded by the blast several times, burnt and poisoned due to inhalation of smoke in the ensuing fire. Following the battle, he would spend the next two months in hospital for recovery. After his recovery, Kedrov returned to school, graduating in 1907 from the Mikhailovsky Artillery Academy. Promoted to Captain Lieutenant, he was the senior officer aboard the Pyotr Veliki, or Peter the Great, and no, I mean the real one, which was a gunnery training ship as well as having several other commands. World War I would be the second time Kedrov took to the sea to defend Russia. After delivering a captured German codebook, which allowed the Allies to decode German signals for a good portion of the war, he served aboard HMS Theseus, HMS Conqueror, and HMS Emperor of India as naval observer in 1914 and 1915. Once he transferred back to Russia, he took command of the Imperial Russian battleship Gangit, eventually rising to the rank of Rear Admiral during the conflict. His intelligence and charisma allowed him to keep control of the Dreadnought in spite of a restless crew, thus the name of the campaign in the game where you can earn Kedrov to tame a Dreadnought. But rebellion was in the air and soon the Admiral would need to take to the sea once again. The final war Kedrov fought for Russia was the Civil War, fighting against the coup that would eventually overthrow the interim government. The flag in the background here you may recognize as the flag of the modern Russian Federation, but the pattern of that flag is actually the same as the flag of the White Movement, which was the complex and diverse alliance of interests within Russia attempting to fight off the Red Army in other words, the Soviets, and as such, Kedrov actually has sort of the strange distinction of being one of the only commanders in the game depicted beneath a flag that they actually fought against. So in this case, I have chosen to replace it. During this war, Kedrov's greatest contribution was the organization of the evacuation on the Crimean Peninsula, where retreating Russians fled their country for Turkey and beyond. For three days, Kedrov's navy ferried people away from the Crimean Peninsula, ultimately saving the lives of more than 145,000 Russian citizens and white army soldiers, who stood more than a very good chance of being executed by the victorious Soviets. Exiled from Russia, Kedrov lived the rest of his days in France. He became a civil engineer and helped other Russian expatriates adapt to their new lives outside of the newly formed Soviet Union. He would die in 1945. 
Though Kedrov's military history includes fighting in three unsuccessful wars for Russia, he is included in Legends for his tireless service to his countrymen, for fighting on in spite of injury, and for his opposition to one of the most tyrannical regimes in human history. In Legends, Kedrov serves the role of survivability expert on Russian battleships. Considering the way that Russian battleships work, that is an interesting concept, because of course, you have limited use of both damage control and damage repair parties. One reason you may think Kedrov is the ideal captain is because of the exponentially worsening accuracy of Russian battleships. Since you will generally find that no matter what you do, your ships are incredibly accurate up close, start to get a little iffy between 8 and 10 kilometers, and at longer ranges, you enjoy some of the worst accuracy in the game. Kedrov's base trait is also very useful for Russian battleships, and if you aren't using Kedrov as your commander for battleships, then you'd probably be well served to use him to inspire whatever other commander you've decided to use. Kedrov also comes with several abilities that are going to help provide you additional charges of your limited damage control party consumable and to actually avoid needing to use it. In addition to that, he also has the greatest access to abilities that are going to improve the number and strength of your repair party consumable. In other words, Kedrov helps shore up some of the weaknesses present in the Russian battleship line, fixing those things that can be fixed while not devoting a lot of resources to problems in the line that are basically not fixable. As we get into abilities, I'm going to give you all some visual indication what I think of Kedrov's kit as it relates to Russian battleships. And with that up, I'll run down the general thoughts here. In slot 1, you have the option between not the one for Nuisance and Brawler. This is a pretty standard choice, but because of the peculiarities of Russian battleships in the game, both of these choices are pretty interesting, and they're both actually completely reasonable choices. You may like not the one for nuisance because it's going to give you a little less likelihood to use one of your limited number of damage control party consumables. It does that by improving the fire coefficient of your ship, which sounds complicated, and it is, but essentially what it does is increases your ship's natural resistance or vulnerability to fire. It also improves your chances of not flooding once a torpedo hits your ship. And though it doesn't actually say this, it does decrease the damage done to your ship by torpedoes. For instance, here you can see before and after what the torpedo damage protection of my Synop is. It's not a very sexy ability because it doesn't translate into something that you can really see in the game, but it is definitely useful. On the other hand, Russian ships are designed for close ranged engagements something that isn't exceptionally obvious considering their fairly slow turrets and long reload times. Brawler is an attractive choice for Russian battleships because you're throwing away ranges where your ship is going to have a very difficult time actually hitting anything for the chance to hit more often at ranges where your gunnery is really quite exceptional. On top of that, you do get a little extra help in the torpedo spotting department. Uh, one thing I will note about Brawler though if you want to use this on a stock Russian battleship, your range is going to be less than your sea detectability, meaning people can spot and shoot you before you have a chance to respond, which is a little bit annoying. For your slot 2 choice, you are probably going to be better served by taking crisscross. For one, Russian turret traverse is not exceptional. The further away you are, the less you really need turret traverse, but since you probably want to be inside of 10 kilometers, being able to track fast moving targets and emerging targets is very much important to you. Your other choice here is Porcupine. And as much as I love secondary builds, and even though Russian ships do appear to have a decent number of secondaries, you're probably not going to like how exposed you're going to be if you bring the majority of your secondary guns to bear on a target. Unlike German ships, you not only don't have a turtleback armor scheme, but your citadel is actually, in most cases, above the waterline, so you can get punished severely in situations where Porcupine is useful to you. At the sort of angles that you probably want to play your Russian battleships, you're probably still only going to be able to get three or four guns max on a target before you start really exposing yourself to a lot of damage, and it's just not worth it. 
Your third slot is actually going to say a lot about your philosophy as a battleship commander. All three are definitely doable, all three are pure survivability skills, and they all exist to combat damage over time, basically fire and flooding. Though I don't use it myself, the one that I would say offers the highest long-term promise is Volunteer, because as you can see, it offers you the most damage control choices. Presumably this comes at the expense of the duration of damage control parties. This is talking about the number of seconds where you are not susceptible to additional fire and flooding damage. Whether this is actually a bad thing kind of depends on how you view the usefulness of damage control parties. Uh, if you very carefully time the use of damage control parties, this can be a disadvantage because you may be able to stop taking fire or flooding a few seconds before taking another hit, which will save you a little bit of health. Of course, if you like to use your damage control party more simply as a, I would like the bad things that are happening to my ship to stop, then this penalty is actually kind of a good thing because the sooner your damage control party ends, the sooner the recharge timer actually starts. Volunteer's chief advantage comes after you've ranked Kedroff to at least 14, which is when you get access to a second additional charge, something these other choices aren't going to give you. If you like using the moments of invulnerability to reduce damage from an ongoing fire or flooding effect, then collective labor will increase your ability to do so and it will give you one, and only ever one, additional damage control charge. So at least until you get to level 14 with Kedroth, it may actually be the more attractive option for you. The other option here is Firefighter. This choice is probably the weakest since you're relying on improving a passive fire coefficient to avoid having to use your damage control party at all, and reducing the chance that you'll really need to use it. In general, being on fire isn't fun, but having just one fire on your ship is generally not the end of the world. Firefighter takes the two sections of your ship that are most likely to catch on fire, those being the middle two sections, and turns them into one fire zone, saving you a pretty considerable amount of damage potentially. The reason I might say this is the weaker choice is because you only have two repair parties in Russian ships, and on most ships they aren't especially good heals. So, enduring more fire damage than you need to may be a worse outcome in a Russian ship than for battleships of pretty much any other line. Slot 4. You should use Master Mechanic. This is going to partially fix your lack of available hit point recovery that comes with Russian battleships. It's going to make those heals slightly better, and it's going to let you use them more often. This is a big winner over reaching out, which improves, and only to a moderate degree, the range of your guns into areas where you're more than likely to miss things. For me, this one really isn't much of a choice, and if you really care about trying to hit things at further ranges, you should probably use Galler instead of Kedrov. For your legendary ability, normally I'm a big fan of Will to Rebuild, and just like on other battleships of other nations, this is still a really useful skill here. The interesting thing here is I would usually advise against running with scissors, but given how much Russian ships can benefit from improved turret traverse, it's actually fairly attractive, and as you can see, I've been playing around with it. I can say that the penalty applied to dispersion is nearly unnoticeable at the ranges where you probably should be trying to fight. In particular, it does seem to pair well with Brawler. This penalty does increase over time, so by the time you're legendary 3 or 4, maybe this is more noticeable, and certainly if you're using reaching out and shooting at super long ranges, you're probably going to get some truly laugh out loud dispersion. At least as far as the first two legendary ranks though, these two options are both very reasonable choices. And maybe after you get to legendary 3 or 4, you switch that out for will to rebuild. When looking to Kedroth for any cross-class potential, there's really no good reason to do this right now. I don't know if he's in a territory where I would say that you definitely lost a bet if you want to use him. If you were really keen on the idea, I could see you trying to make a brawling Chapayev with three or four heals, at least as long as she keeps her 30mm bow. 
But I'm not suggesting this, just keep that in mind if you really want to do something weird over the weekend. Though Brawler increases your torpedo detection range for cruisers, running with scissors is utterly useless on a cruiser. And most of these other perks you're going to get more out of even the base commander von Essen. Under no circumstance would I consider using Kedrov on a destroyer, unless they come out with Soviet destroyers with a heel, like on PC, and even then, I can't imagine that the heel would be good enough to throw everything else away. When you are considering inspirations for Kedrov, the most effective commanders are probably going to be Ciliax for the improved AP shell damage. You do have very big guns, particularly at higher tier. And I personally think that Charles Madden also pairs very well with Russian ships because he's going to give you a slightly faster reload speed and a little extra bump to getting your guns on target. Runners up might include Cunningham, obviously helping your accuracy, which isn't really much of a concern at those shorter ranges, but it may offset the effects you feel from running with scissors. After that, Von Essen is potentially useful at any level, and Jujard is undoubtedly more useful below level 5 because the Sinop and Vladivostok's 406mm guns really don't have that much difficulty going through just about any armor. Von Essen's ability is going to help in some edge cases where you hit a ship angled at 45 degrees or just slightly beyond that. In those cases, you'd normally be subject to a random bounce, but with Von Essen, in those cases, it can be rolled as a penetration if it's within those extra few degrees that his ability allows. Defensively, your best choices here are probably going to be to reduce your sea detectability. If you're concerned about being outranged, and there is a very good chance that you will be, then not being seen quite so often is going to help you avoid damage that comes with that. John Jellicoe will improve your heals by extending the amount of time that they are active, so he is presently the best way to improve your HP recovery. My next runner-up after that would be Reinhard Scheer, actually, but really probably just for people who really, really, really don't like to be on fire. Uh, he would add a small advantage there, as well as reducing your damage control reload ever so slightly. As an inspiration, Kedroff is only useful on battleships, and in that capacity he is a very strong choice for just about any battleship, particularly for battleships with exceptionally slow turret speeds, or if you want to be able to hold your own in a brawl. As such, he is probably a little bit more valuable in German and Russian battleships, and perhaps a little less valuable on French or Japanese battleships that are going to spend a little bit more time in long-range combat. But at no point would I say Kedroff is a bad choice for battleship commander's inspiration. Since his ability is specific to battleships, this means you get absolutely nothing from using him on destroyers or cruisers, so no stars for either of those. In any case, those are my thoughts on Kedroff. I hope you have found this quick review to be helpful and interesting. Let me know what you guys thought down in the comments section. And of course, thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you on the next one.